In Japan, those who have experienced the force of nature never forget it. Rarely are the tremors as strong as in these recordings, but up to 300 times a day the earth trembles in the island state. Researchers claim the signs of a new quake are increasing. The seismic activities in Tokyo and the surrounding areas are alarming. Hardly any other city is more vulnerable than the economic capital of Tokyo. Three tectonic plates come together here. A heavy earthquake would have devastating effects to the entire world economy. Takashi Furumura is one of the leading earthquake researchers at the University of Tokyo. He has a pretty good idea of how severe the damage could be if a strong earthquake hit the capital. If an earthquake hits Tokyo with a magnitude of 7 or more, then from our estimates 200 people would be victims of train derailments. About 11,000 people would die, and 7 million inhabitants would be evacuated. The damage could cost around 800 billion euros. With our calculations, we want to try and reduce the damage to people and buildings as best we can. Like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Tokyo earthquake of 1923 is etched into the collective memory of the Japanese. A 7.9 magnitude earthquake destroyed 40% of the city and left 200,000 dead. In this temple, the victims of the great earthquake are commemorated. Takehiko Yamamura is one of the most recognized earthquake researchers in Japan. The government advisor is regarded by the public as an unpleasant reminder of the ever-present danger. In the last hundred years there were 19 earthquakes, each with more than 100 victims. We can expect an earthquake like this every five years. The problem is that people forget much too quickly and it's only a matter of time before a major quake will hit the capital. We must strengthen the awareness of this danger. People must be prepared and know what to do in their immediate environment. In 1995, a serious earthquake hit the Japanese port of Kobe. 20 seconds were enough to turn Kobe into a mass of rubble. For the first time, doubts were raised as to whether the current technology can be trusted. The Japanese sense of superiority took a blow. The Kobe earthquake was an extreme shock to us. Six and a half thousand people have died. We had to once again realize that there is no escape from an earthquake. We have seen that we are in a crisis and cannot trust the government. In Kobe, the authorities have failed miserably. People must finally understand that they must safeguard their own destiny. So how does one behave correctly in such a situation? In the disaster rescue center in Tokyo, an earthquake of a 7.3 magnitude is simulated. It was an interesting experience for me, because in Japan we must always expect that something like this can happen. What just happened in the simulator, I would never have imagined. The Japanese rely heavily on early warning technology. There are about 2,000 sensors nationwide which can measure the first shock waves that precede a major earthquake. They are linked straight to the epicenter. Information on the location and strength of the quake are transmitted in a flash. This gives the Japanese a warning time of 5 to 30 seconds, no more. But in this time, nuclear reactors can be shut down and trains stopped.
Many large corporations have made provisions, so that if a quake hits Tokyo, a second headquarters in Osaka or Hiroshima can take over the fate of the company in seconds. Many buildings in Tokyo are now built on vibration shock absorbers. Built into the foundations, they allow the building the flexibility to sway. Here at the skyscraper complex in Rapongo Hills, a garden serves as the evacuation area. Beneath the lawn is a huge concrete slab, which is mounted on pillars with hydraulic shock absorbers. We have built a complex of buildings that can withstand a big quake and thereafter will remain intact. For the first time, people should not have to flee from their homes, but can feel safe inside them. Takahiko Yamamura filmed these scenes in a supermarket during the earthquake in Kobe in 1995. There is an awareness of the danger, but people still believe in the myth of their own invulnerability. Everyone thinks it will not happen to me, and that head in the sand attitude leads to recklessness. After the Kobe earthquake, we were alerted, reacted to the panic, and took precautions. But now many people think that the government has the responsibility to protect them. That's not enough. We must constantly be on guard. The Ueno Park in Tokyo. Relaxing here during the cherry blossom season, it is hard to worry about whether one is equipped with an emergency kit and helmet for a potential earthquake. <laughs> On the whole, the Japanese appear to lack the constant fear that grips many Europeans living in Japan. Their belief in the transience of life plays a crucial role in their relaxed attitude. The prediction of earthquakes in Japan has succeeded so far, mainly by chance. More accurate forecasts in the future are increasingly likely, but they are useless if there is no time to evacuate the people. The ominous reality is that building a totally earthquake-proof city will probably never be possible, either here in Japan or elsewhere.